Hey, it's Barb from Wonderful Works, and today we're going to talk about something that no one likes, but everyone deals with, and that's conflict in the classroom. And we're going to learn what happens when you look at it differently. So glad you're here today. Oh, hey there. Aren't you just lovely in your new purple outfit? Why, you just look like you're about to have the most perfect day leading kids' ministry like nothing at all could go wrong. Oh, my. Someone's having a moment. Guess maybe your day won't be so lovely after all. Conflict in the church classroom, changing our perspective to change our approach. When it comes to leading kids at church, it can be easy to expect everything to be, well, easy. But the truth is, sometimes leading kids is actually pretty tough, especially if you have a student who seems to thrive on conflict. That doesn't feel easy at all, but it might feel a lot like, this kid is giving you a hard time. But what if I told you there may be more going on than you can see? Take a look at this iceberg. All we can see is the top. That's kind of like the behavior we see from kids who are having a meltdown or saying angry things like, no, you can't make me, or insulting your lovely purple outfit. All we can see is their behavior. But just like the iceberg, there's usually a lot more going on underneath. When a child is acting out, it tells us that something is wrong. It may be something that we can figure out pretty quickly, or it may be something that we never know about. Either way, what we do know is that when a child is having challenging behavior, it means that they are struggling inside. Which means it isn't that this kid is giving you a hard time, but rather that this kid is having a hard time. And when we look at challenging behavior like that and understand that the person who is really struggling is a child, then how we approach the conflict can change. In fact, approaching conflict can become as easy as remembering your ABCs. So the next time you have a conflict in class, try this. A. Acknowledge feelings. Everyone feels better when they feel understood, so start with acknowledging how the child feels. For instance, if you have a student who doesn't want to stop playing to come to his lesson, you could say something like, I know it's hard to stop playing. I like to play games too. This helps the child feel heard. It also gives you a place to agree, which reduces conflict. And remember, as you speak, use a warm, firm tone of voice and open body language. This will communicate safety and authority. Then B, set boundaries. Making things clear is always helpful, so explain what the expected behavior looks like. But right now, it's time to sit in a circle and listen to the Bible lesson. And then C, give controlled choices. This means give them some choices by presenting two acceptable options for what they can do next. Would you like to find your seat now or help pass out the Bibles first? Giving choices gives the child some control back, which lowers anxiety. It also gives a child a face-saving way out of the conflict, which allows them to do what you ask without creating a power struggle. Very often, when a child's challenging behavior is met with understanding, clarity, and choices, conflict can be quickly resolved. But of course, it's not always that easy. Sometimes, despite your best effort, the conflict will continue, and if that happens, and if it's appropriate, it's okay to give a consequence. What that looks like will depend on your church's behavior hmm. policy and protocols. But what is most important to understand is that by handling conflict with empathy and respect, that doesn't mean that you always give in or allow disruptive behavior to continue. It just means that you're intentional with your words, tone of voice, and body language, so that no matter the outcome, the child feels safe and cared for. And that matters because there is nothing more lovely than showing kids the love of Jesus especially when they may be struggling with more than we know. Well, I think we learned a lot today, but there's one more thing before you go. Remember that iceberg we talked about? Well, we each have one of our own. So the next time you're having a moment, stop and think about what may be really lying underneath and how you would want someone else to respond to you. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.